This is a wonderful time in the liturgical life of the church as we will be celebrating the Feast of Corpus Christi. And so this year, we're doing three days of preparation, a tribium, three days of prayer. So as to prepare our hearts and our minds to enter into this great mystery that is so central to the life of the church. And why is the Eucharist central to us? It's because of what Jesus Christ will give to us. You know that at the Last Supper, in Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 28, in Mark chapter 14, verses 22 and 24, and Luke chapter 22, verses 15 to 20, Jesus had a meal with his disciples, celebrating the Passover, which was the way in which the Jews celebrated God's saving action, delivering them from slavery in Egypt to give them a new life as a people. And to commemorate that event, annually, the Jews would celebrate the Feast of the Passover. Jesus gave a new meaning to the Passover on the night before he was to die. And so at that meal, as he took bread with his disciples, he said, this is my body, which will be given up for you. And then he took the chalice, took the wine, and said, this is my blood, which will be poured out for you. And then in Luke chapter 22, verse 19, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Very important. So that's an instruction that he gave to the disciples. And we know that the early church fulfilled that, co that command of Jesus Christ. And so this became the means of worship for the early Christians that gather on the first day of the week, which is Sunday, to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and to partake of that meal that commemorated our Passover of being free from sin to live a new life. Jesus Christ. So Jesus gives us an understanding of the meaning of the Eucharist and its centrality to our life. As in the Gospel of John chapter, 30, chapter 6 verse 35, he says to his disciples, I am the bread of life. No one who comes to me will have hunger. No one who believes in me will have a thirst. And he continues, continues in verse 51. I am the living bread come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. So, children, we must reflect on this. Do you want to live forever? And the secret to this is what Jesus Christ offers us. He says, Eat my body and drink my blood, you will live forever. Of course, if we partake of the body and blood of Christ, it means that we must become aware of the presence of Christ within us that will enable us to live a particular way. So that indeed that which we believe, we will also practice. Now, it is important that we also understand that this bread and this wine that we partake of, why is it that we, we believe that it is the body of Christ? Because Jesus says so. Remember, at the Last Supper, Jesus says, this is my body. And then he took the chalice and says, this is the chalice of my blood. Take and eat, take and drink. So ultimately what we're doing is believing what Jesus Christ says. So we believe and Jesus Christ says, this is my blood, this is my body. I say it is real. That's what Jesus says. Now faith, understand the faith, as explained to us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1, is faith is the assurance of things hoped for and confidence in things not seen. And that which we hope for as Christians is what is revealed to us. And it is Jesus Christ, therefore, that reveals to us the hope that we have 
in the bread and wine be the body and blood of Christ. And yes, so faith is a source of things hopeful and confidence of things not seen. And so our confidence comes from the fact that it is Jesus Christ who says this. So as we celebrate the mystery of Corpus Christi this year, let us reflect on the meaning and the importance of the body and blood of Christ for our life. And allow it to make a difference with respect to our devotion, our attentiveness, and our participation in this great mystery. It is Jesus Christ giving himself to us, and it is in this way that we are prepared for everlasting life. Amen. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me, and he's the one I'm living for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. That experience is what makes it possible for us in a very real and special and mysterious way to be with Jesus. Our faith is believing in every word uttered from the mouth of Jesus. Living and loving Jesus is made even more compelling and real by his presence in the Eucharist. This is the gift of his presence, even to the end of time. Jesus is fully present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. He taught this to his disciples, and he reinforced it several times. In one passage, John 6, verses 35, 48, 51, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. That was how important it was for them to get it, that he's truly present in the Eucharist. On his word, we know that we will have life eternal and abundant if we eat and drink of him. It's an unending sacrifice. It's unbloody. It's unending. The pledge of a new and more glorious covenant, that's what it is for us. A thanksgiving feast of love, a pledge of our future glory. The truth has been handed on through sacred tradition and through sacred scripture. And as we know, sacred tradition comes from the very first century, long before it was ever written down. It was. The word of Jesus was handed on to us. And so we believe. We believe because it was from those who saw him, who touched him, who were moved by his, by his very heart, who knew him so well, and yet so little. So it, for us, it is who is the Eucharist, not what, but who. The Eucharist is the person of Jesus fully present to us under the species of bread and wine after consecration. The substance of bread and wine fully changed to the body and blood of Jesus by the action of the Holy Spirit. What a great and unfathomable mystery. A mystery to make us one. In John 17 verse 21, Jesus says that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us. It's a, it's a gift of unity, an expression of desire that we be one in God, truly one. Jesus has raised us up by the Eucharist, in the Eucharist, to his divinity. This is what Jesus wants for us. And who can know the mind of God? It is precisely because we approach the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in the Eucharist that we must be transformed. We are transformed by his grace. To approach Jesus in the Eucharist is a free choice. 
Nobody's forcing you. He didn't want that. He wanted to you to come to him, each and every one of us, freely, willingly. Like Zacchaeus, who wanted the joy of being in Jesus' company. It was so, it was such a great desire in Zacchaeus that he would have done anything. So he changed his mindset. He changed his behavior. He became just. He wanted to become just. And Jesus said, come Zacchaeus, I will dine with you today. Also, like Peter, the desire to be with Jesus. He recognized Jesus, put on clothes and swam to Jesus. Yes, we too must be willing to make the changes we must in order to follow Jesus and receive him in the blessed sacrament. St. Paul says, each one must examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. Anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. We must believe and make the changes to be with Jesus, like Zacchaeus, and you will hear, I will dine with you today. The Trinity will come and make their home in us because we do the will of God and reveal as revealed to us in Jesus. This happens when we receive Jesus in the Blessed Stack Sacrament in a state of grace. When we communicate, that is receiving the body and blood of Jesus, God works in and through and with us. With us, he fills us with spiritual nourishment. This is what we call sanctifying grace, the indwelling in us. We meet Jesus in faith and Jesus scoops us up and by the Eucharist we're indwelt. The Holy Trinity is in us. So once we receive Jesus at Mass in the Blessed Sacrament, we should have no distractions, no, but just Jesus is fully, really, truly present at that moment, physically in you, and we should take advantage of that to speak to him, to communicate him, to listen, just to, to gaze on him in, a, in us in that special moment. This is not an opportunity we should lose. Give ourselves at least 15 minutes to truly be present to Jesus in this time. This is our faith. This is the faith of our fathers. This is the faith handed on to us. To believe in Jesus and to do what he commands. Let us look again at Jesus in the Eucharist. Silent, humble, powerful, loving. He's present. Do you wish to leave? Mary, Mother of Jesus, be a mother to us now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We come now to your table, Lord, you are the living bread. We come now to your table, Lord, let every soul be fed. You are the living bread, let every soul be fed. And now may every soul be fed with living bread.